These presentations will work a comprehensive bookkeeping problem both within Excel as well as within QuickBooks. Excel having the advantages of being able to see all the components and how all those components fit together to make the end product, that end product, the financial statements. QuickBooks having the advantage of being able to use forms, simple data inputs, and an automated system in order to convert that simple data input into the end product, the financial statements. We will work each component of the problem in Excel first and then work that same information in QuickBooks. Hello, in this presentation, we will go through the closing process in our bookkeeping problem in Excel, keeping in mind how that same information might be input into accounting software such as QuickBooks. If you would like more information about the QuickBooks Pro, take a look at our comprehensive course in the link below. Before we go too far into it, do want to point out that we haven't done the adjusting process for January or the bank reconciliations. We'll take a look at those in the second month after we complete the second month, and we'll note some problems that will happen when we have adjustments to the prior months that we don't make until the second month after the closing process. We'll see how that can impact both uh, QuickBooks and or accounting software and our uh, books as we do them in Excel. So at this point, we're going to go forward and keep on entering data into the following month here. And in order to do that for our books, we need to have some type of closing process or understand what the closing process is so that we can generate the reports. Now, in accounting software, the closing process could be more automated or we could have some more formal closing processes put in place. QuickBooks will drive the closing process by default by the date of the financials, meaning we tell QuickBooks we're fiscal year end, and so we want to end on December in this case, and therefore QuickBooks will make some adjustments to, in essence, close the books as of December and start the books over, and we need to know what the reports will, what, ha what happens to the reports when we do that. And we can also drive the closing process by setting the date ranges. So for example, when we make the profit and loss here, if we set the, the date range from January 1st to January 31st, that then is going to give us obviously the information for that date range. If we set the date range for the following month, then QuickBooks will in essence close out the prior month and will start from the following month counting uh, the income. This gets a little bit more complex when we look at the balance sheet, so we'll have to consider the relationship of the balance sheet and the income and how the, how the closing process works. We'll look at a trial balance when we go through our system so we can see what the closing process is doing. And then we can see how QuickBooks better, we can better see how QuickBooks is doing this in an automated fashion. Note that many accounting softwares may uh, have a, some type of manual closing process in order to make sure that we don't enter information into the prior period. And we'll, and we'll see some of these problems when we have uh, adjustments that need to be made to the prior period. We'll see how the closing process, when uh, we're able to adjust data in the prior period, can throw off retained earnings and make our financial statements not tie together. So the fact that QuickBooks has a, a way for us to go back and adjust things and can do the closing process automatically can be a good thing because it gives us the leeway to fix changes and problems if, as they happen. But it's also a bad thing because it can, we can accidentally delete or we can delete the audit trail and we can uh, end up in situations where our balance sheet doesn't roll forward because we made prior period adjustments and we don't know exactly why. And so those are the pros and cons of, of the closing process. But in order to know that, in order to understand that, we'll go through the pro closing process in Excel and see what it contains. And that'll give us a better understanding about what QuickBooks is doing. So remember that last time we created the financial statements from the trial balance. We took these trial balance numbers, just created the financial statements from them, and we can do that all in an automated process, and QuickBooks can, in essence, do the same thing. QuickBooks is just taking these numbers and turning them from a uh, debit and credit format to a plus and minus format to an accounting equation format similar to this here as we convert it to a balance sheet income statement and a statement of owner's equity. What we're going to do now is the closing process because as we start the next month, we want to count upwards, meaning all these accounts down here, these income statement accounts, we really need to start over. We have to reset the clocks. These are timing statements. What we're going to do, typically we do this in a separate worksheet when we do something in an Excel problem. We do it in the closing process worksheet. So I'm going to jump over here to the next worksheet. We're on the trial balance tab. I'm going to go to the second tab. 
it's going to be the January close. And what we have here, what you're seeing here, is just these numbers are just going to be pulled over from the prior trial balance. If you look at the formula, it says trial balance AK5 for the checking account. If I go back over to the trial balance and scroll up to cash, this is cell AK5. So it's just pulling this number over. So all these numbers here are just being automatically pulled over to these numbers in our closing balance worksheet. What we'll have is the trial balance here. Then we're going to put our closing entries just into our worksheet. Rather than putting them into a general ledger account, we're just going to put them into this worksheet here. And that will give us a quick check. That will give us a quick check figure as to whether it has done what we want it to do. And then uh, we'll move forward from there to the following month. So what do we want it to do? What do we want from the closing process? What we're doing here is moving from January to February. And what we need then is to count February as its own set, its own data set. So we can compare January and February. And we the, the balance sheet accounts are okay, but the timing accounts, as they're called, or the income statement accounts and the draws account are temporary accounts. These are counting upwards. So that, that 2467 only makes sense if we say that happened during January. Unlike cash up here, if I say we have 94,437 of cash, that is what it is. As of this point in time, we have that. That is what it is. But if we say revenue is 2467, then we need to know what that, I mean, what are you talking about? Are we talking about revenue for a year, revenue for a month, revenue for a day. We don't really know. We need a time period in order to, to find that. Uh, this first revenue, this 2467, is for the month of January. That's what its time period is. If we move to the month of February, then that needs to go back to zero as of February 1st. And then we need to count upward from there. So what that means is that all of these are timing accounts. Everything below the owner's equity is a timing account. And all we need to do is make them zero. All this 6,222, a loss, needs to go into the owner's equity account. And that'll zero everything out. And then we can start from the new month and just start the new race. The new That's what the, the, the business cycle is. We're going to start the new race in the new month, starting at zero, counting up in terms of revenue and see how we do, trying to beat our last score in terms of high revenues. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to add a new account. It's called an income summary account. And the reason we do this, this is the typical thing we do in book problems to make this closing process happen. And I call it a four-step process. We'll close out revenue to the income summary. And then we'll close out all the expenses to the income summary. Then we'll close out the income summary to the equity section. And uh, then we'll close out draws if we had any. We don't have any at this time, so we don't need to do that last step. So that's going to be the, the steps we do. Now, note, we could do this all in one big journal entry. But the four-step process kind of it gives us an ability to close things out one at a time and then check our numbers and then close out uh, the income summary once we have determined that all these other accounts are zero as they should be. So that's going to be what we will do. We'll go through that uh, four-step process. Remember the end goal of this four-step process is just to close out all of these temporary accounts, make them all zero, and put all that data, all that information just into the owner equity so that the post-closing trial balance, which will be the end result here, which is just summing up, uh, these two cells, if I double click on say cash, it's just summing these up. That'll give us the ending balance. What will be left? We'll still have all the balance sheet accounts down to uh, the equity account. And then everything below that will be zero. It'll be zeroed out if we've done it correctly. So we'll go through this process here. We're, gonna, we're going to first close out all the income accounts. These are the three income accounts right there. They need to be zero. So in order to make them zero, they have a credit balance. We're going to do the opposite thing to them, which is a debit. So we're going to debit those items. I'm just going to, uh, well, let's do them one at a time. I'll go to the merchandise, copy that, and we're going to paste it here. Paste it in B4, right click, paste one, two, three. The date is going to be as of the end of the month, January 31st. All, we, all will be because it's uh, the closing process. And that's going to be 2467. So for 2467. And maybe I should move this down. We can we could probably have room down here, so I'll move it down a little bit. 131, so we could see the income statement accounts. And we'll say that this is going to be a debit in B15. So I'm putting it in B15. If you put them in the exact same cells, it'll be a little bit easier to, 
follow along. So we'll put it down here so it's closer to where we will actually be posting. So there we have that, and that's going to be for 2467. Then we have the rent music. Now there's nothing there, so we don't really need to put uh, the account there. It's, not, it's already at zero. So I'll skip that. We're going to go to service now. I'm going to copy the service. And that has a credit of 508. So we're going to do the opposite thing to it or debit it for 508. We'll put that in B16. Right click and paste 123. That for 508. Now we're going to close this out to the income summary account. So the credit's going to be income summary. That then will go over here. If we add these two up, it adds up to 2975. We're going to put that in the credit section. I'm going to do that with our with our negative sum formula. I call it the plug formula, which is the negative SUM double click of these items. I always highlight the the whole box just in case there's an adjustment or something. It'll it'll adjust automatically. So there we have that. All we had to do was highlight these, and that that's the two nine seven eight. You could put just a negative two nine seven eight or seven five there as well. Then we're going to put that to the income summary. So here's the income summary account. That's what we're going to credit. So we will then copy this and put that in B17, right clicking and paste one, two, three. Then we're going to go to the home tab, alignment group and increase the indentation. And there we have it. So this is our journal entry. We're going to post that not exactly to the general ledger this time, but we're going to post it to this worksheet. This is our closing balance worksheet. And uh, we'll see the immediate results on this worksheet. That's the, going to be the benefit. We'll see what is happening right away and then we'll create our next uh, financial statement or our next worksheet for uh, working the next part of the problem the next month of February using these end numbers. So we're going to put our cursor down here in H24 and say that that equals and point to this 2467 and enter. So that brings it down to zero. That's what we want. Then we're going to go down here to H26 and do the same thing. I'm just going to point to that number and it should bring this balance down to zero, which is what we want. This equals the 508. That brings that 508 down to zero. That's what we're looking for. And then we're going to put it into the income summary. This is a temporary account, a closing account, one which we're just using to the closing process and will be zero before the closing process and zero after the entire closing process is done, if done correctly. So we are in H23. We're going to say that that equals this 2,975. And there is the 2,975. So we have closed out these amounts, adding up to 2,975 credit, and put them into the income summary. Now we're going to close out the expense accounts, all these accounts. We'll just do the ones that have balances in them. So we're going to close these accounts into the income summary. So we're going to start off, I'm going to say this is a, an also 131, the second of four closing journal entries. Cost of goods sold has a uh, debit balance, so we need to do the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. So I'm going to copy cost of goods sold, right click and copy. And I'm going to put it on the bottom. So here's the date. I'm going to put it on the bottom here, right click and paste one, two, three. And I'm going to go ahead and home tab, alignment and indent. And then the amount's going to be a credit. I'm going to put a negative of 1950. Scrolling down, we then have the office supplies, which is a debit of 500. So we will credit it 500 to make it go to zero. So I'm going to right click and copy office supplies. Scroll back up in B21, right click and paste 123. Going to go home tab, alignment, increase in dent. We are in D21. I'm going to put a negative 500 and enter. Next item, we have the payroll expense. It's got a debit of 5,767. We're going to do the opposite thing to it and credit it to make it go down. So I'm going to copy the payroll expense, right click and copy. We'll scroll up to our journal entry in B22, right click and paste 123. Then we're going to go to the home tab, alignment and indent. The amount in D22 then is going to be this 5,767. I'm going to put a credit negative 5,767 and enter. Next item, we have the telephone expense. Once again, debit all expenses are. So we're going to credit all the expenses of 360. We're going to do the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. 
Note we're building just a long journal entry, so this is longer than we've probably seen before in terms of journal entries. So uh, just bear with us and then we'll get there. So we're just going to copy the telephone expense. And then we're going to scroll back up and put that in B23, right click and paste 123. Home tab, alignment, increase in dent. Then the amount is going to be for that 360, it's going to be a credit. So I'm going to make it a negative 360. And then we have the one more, the utilities expense, also a debit of 620 as all the expenses are. We're going to do the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. Right click and copy the utilities expense. Put that in B24, right click and paste 123. Home tab, alignment group, increase indentation. In cell D24, we're going to put a negative 620. Then we're going to add those up and we're going to put the debit here. So if I just sum them up, I can highlight them in Excel. There it is, 9,197. We're going to do that with our plug formula, the negative sum formula once again. So we are in cell C19. We're going to put negative SUM, double click the sum formula. And note that this thing can kind of be in the way. Sometimes you can move it. If we take this and move it out of the way, then we could just highlight. And I like to highlight once again cells C and or columns C and D. Just in case something moves, we can then it'll still pick it up. And then we're saying, okay, and this is going to be a debit. So we're going to put that into the income summary account. So I'm going to copy the income summary account, put that in B19, right click and paste one, two, three. So this is our second of four journal entries. Typically the longer of the journal entries is gonna be most of the expenses. We have to close out all the expenses, but it's pretty easy once you do it a few times because all the expenses have debit balances and all you need to do is just list all the expenses out and make them a credit because our goal is just to make all of these go down to zero. Now we're gonna post this. We're gonna post the income summary first. Here's the income summary. It already, ha it already has something in it in H23. What I'm going to do is double click on it and add this cell to it. So I'm going to double click on it, go to the end of it, right after the 7, say plus, and then point to this cell and then enter. Now if something gets messed up or something, we could just delete the whole thing and say equals in H23 and click on the first income summary account and then say plus the second income summary account and enter. So there we have that, and that number should look familiar, hopefully, because that is equal to our net loss. So what we've done is we've closed out the income and the expenses to income summary, given us, in this case, the net loss that we had there, and that's going to be one of our major checks to see if everything's okay before we close out the income summary to the owner's equity. So we're going to go and post the rest of this. Now we're going to post the cost of goods sold. There it is there. Here it is here. We're going to be in H27 and say equals and point to that 1,950, bringing this balance down to zero. We're going to do the same thing down here. We are in H34. We're going to say equals and point to that 500, bringing this 500 down by that 500 to zero. Then we are in H35. We're going to say equals and point to that 5,767, bringing this balance down by 5,767 to zero. And then we are in H36. We're going to say equals, point to that 360 in the telephone expense, bringing this balance down to zero. And then we're in the utilities. Once again, H37, we're going to say that that equals, point to that 620, and that should bring this bound to zero and put us back in balance. So now we have nothing in any of the income statement accounts here on the post-closing trial balance. Remember, this is remember this is called the post-closing trial balance. And we have all of that information then clumped into one number here. That number would be called net income. And that's a similar process that we did on the income statement. We basically grouped everything together to that one number, net income. And then on the statement of owner's equity, you'll recall, we closed out the uh, net income to the owner's equity. That's what we're going to do here, but we'll do it with journal entries. Now we've got the net income in the income summary. We're just going to close it out to owner's equity. 
The two checks before we do that are that one, net income is here. We know that net income from there is now here. The other check, all income statement accounts are zero. So we're saying mm, everything looks good. Now we're going to close out the income summary to where we really wanted it to go. That then to the equity. So we're going to say 131, next journal entry. This income summary has a debit balance. That's unusual because it's a loss. So if it was income, it would be a credit. Because it's a loss, it's a debit. We need to make it go down to zero. We're going to do the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So we'll copy the income summary, right click and copy. We're going to put that underneath the date here. So we are in B27, right click and paste 123. We'll go to the Home tab, Alignment, and Increase the Indentation. Then we're going to go to the Credit side, and we're going to put a negative 6222 and Enter. Then we need a debit of uh, that same amount, of course. I'm going to use the, you know, the plug formula, the negative formula, but just say negative of that number, meaning I just want to pick that number up, Excel, and multiply it times negative 1, or just flip the sign. So there it is. And then we're going to put that to the owner's equity account. So here's owner's equity. We're going to post it there. So here's owner's equity in F22. Right click, copy. We're going to put that into cell B26. Right click, paste, one, two, three. We're then going to go over here and just and post that. So we're in H22 in owner's equity. We're going to say equals and point to that 6,222. 6, this credit balance is then going to go down with that debit by net income, bringing the total equity down to 147,175. The other side, income summary, will go here to the income summary account. There's already something here to the income summary account. There's already something in it. So we're going to double click on it, go to the end of it, and then say plus, and then point to that 6,222 bringing that balance back down to zero. So the last step is to close out draws. So there is typically one more journal entry in the four step process as I've called it here. And that's two draws, but there's nothing in draws. So we don't need to, we don't need to do anything there. So first we remember the four step process. We closed out the revenue accounts to income summary. Those are these three accounts, the credit balance accounts. And then we closed out the expense accounts to income summary. Those are everything else under the revenue accounts, including cost of goods sold. And then we closed out what was in income summary, which was net loss in this case, to the equity section. Last step would be to close out draws, the money that the owner took out of the company, if there were any, which there aren't at this time. So now what we have is a post-closing trial balance. This is the closing process. And the post-closing trial balance looks just like the trial balance we had that we made the financial statements from. However, it stops at the owner's equity and all other accounts below it are temporary. And this gives us the process now when we start the next month in, in February 1st, we're going to start with all these temporary accounts adding up from zero. So we're going to start at zero and add up from there. And that's going to be, so we'll set up for the next process. I do want to point out that this uh, closing process is similar to the financial statement process. So if we go back to the trial balance, I'm going to go back to the trial balance tab and scroll all the way over to the financial statements. So I'm scrolling all the way over to where we created the financials. Here they are in BW. And I'm going to scroll down to the equity section. And note the equity section is similar to what we have done here. These two balances here are really the beginning balance, 150.397. And then we uh, decreased it by net loss, which came from the income statement. And then we would have decreased it by draws to get the ending equity account. That's the same thing we did here. I'm going to go back to the, to the uh, closing tab down here, January closing tab. That's the same thing we did here. We took the, for the beginning balance and the equity 153.97, which includes the beginning balance and plus investments. And then we decreased it by the uh, net loss in this case to get to that 144, 175. Now, when you think about it, note that this closing process sets us up to start the next month of February. And we're going to start from uh, the, the revenue account being zero and up from there. Now, if we were to make financial statements for the entire year, 
you'll you'll realize that uh, the clo we couldn't really have the closing we we would still need to be counting revenue upwards meaning if we were to report the income statement for the time period of January 1st through February 28th the full 2 months then we would want to keep counting upwards however if we were reporting data solely from the the month of February February 1st to February 28th then we would need to start from zero and just count that time period when we do this in Excel, that's a, those are difficult processes to make because uh, we, ha we have to reset the financial statements pretty much manually doing this process and then start counting forward again in some format. When we work with accounting software, it has more functionality to be able to run a report, for example, for just the month of uh, January or the month of January and February, meaning give me income on the income statement for the months of January and February or give me income for just the month of February. So those are some of the benefits of, of the software is that you can use the date ranges to automate uh, the, the types of uh, the amount of information, the type months that you want in there. And it can do this closing process in that format. However, as we'll see, there are going to be problems when we do that because if we're able to adjust data from prior time periods and we're trying to match out say going back to this tab the trial balance over here uh, back to the trial balance we're on the statement of equity if we're trying to match up the ending equity of this month with the beginning equity of next month and we're able to go back and change data then uh, it's very possible that we printed out a report for the month of January and then changed some of for example this income statement data for the prior month and now our beginning balance doesn't match our ending balance meaning our ending balance here doesn't look the same as our beginning balance in the following month because we made adjustments those are the things we need to watch out for if we don't have a hard close uh, and and lock you know basically lock up the books for uh, the prior time period so th those are going to be pros and cons we'll see a bit of that when we do the bank reconciliation we'll demonstrate a little bit of what we're talking about here now we're going to go back to the January close tab and the next process we're going to do is we're going to take these balances then and we're going to create a new trial balance tab. So this trial balance tab will have a new tab so that we will start with the beginning balances in the GL and just move forward from these balances forward for the month of February and we'll do a similar process for February but we'll concentrate on a, a few different types of transactions than we did in in January focusing a little bit more on accrual non-cash transactions than we did in the first month.